Now it's starting to work. All right, Mike, I'm getting ready to start. I'm going to hit the recording button. Okay. All right, Michael Minotti, this is Jeff Grubb. This is the Games Beat Decides podcast. Uh, I'm your okay. host, Jeffrey Grubb. Oh, no, it's we've already got it. All right, Michael echo. Minotti. Oh, no, it's already going so bad. <laughs> okay, so this is the... Oh, uh, I'm muted. This is the third week of the Games Beat Decides podcast. Uh, if you haven't watched before, each week we take a couple of topics and we try to... Uh, to come to a determination, a decisive ter ter determination where we know the answer, we give it all to everyone else, so no one else has to think about it. They can just trust us because we always get everything right. Um, like I said, I'm Jeffrey Grubb, and with me is Mike. Mike, why don't you introduce yourself and say hello to all the fine folk? I am Mike Minotti. I am uh, the community manager at Gamesbeat and Jeff Superior. Well, I don't. I wouldn't go that far. I, I mean, I'm definitely and as a person, not like position wise. Well, I mean, I'm better looking, and I'm uh, <laughs> okay. much more liked. So I think it's a give or take. <laughs> okay, all right, buddy. Whatever you think. <laughs> um, so, Mike, uh, before we get into our topics this week, this week, which are NES Classic and uh, maybe some other stuff, um, I was wondering if you had anything from the past week of gaming that you wanted to talk about. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, honestly, a lot of it has been playing the NES Classic and um, Watch Dogs too, which. The embargo actually went up for today, so I, I mean, I could talk to you about Watch Dogs 2 a little bit if you have anything you were wondering about there. Yeah, should, should I care about Watch Dogs 2? I feel like I'm not sure if I should. <laughs> you should care. I, mean, I don't think you should care that much about it, right? I mean, it's still ultimately kind of another uh, Grand Theft Auto, who's he, what's it, right? It's, it's definitely that nicer kind of lighthearted tone is better. It's not like, you know, it's not like, a barrel of laughs, right? It's well, still a game we can go and shoot somebody on the street with a shotgun. But you, you didn't like the first Watch Dogs, right? And but you, no, I was okay with it. Okay, uh, I thought it was fine as far as these kind of you know Grand Theft Auto y things do. I'm like the guy who's kind of down on these kind of games in general a little bit. Like I'm the person who played Grand Theft Auto Five and thought it was you know fine, uh, kind of whatever. And again, it's, it's the same kind of thing. One nice thing about it is. You know, me and you, we don't live in San Francisco, but our company is based out there. So we visit it quite a bit. It is kind of fun to, you know, drive around and see things in San Francisco. And, you know, even if, like, something isn't there that should be there, you can go to where it should be. And even that is still kind of fun. Like, I can go to where Games Beat's office is. And, you know, obviously there's not a sign that says Games Beat's here. But, you know, <laughs> there are some, like, pretty funny missions, like, the way it's been making the rounds today, like, you literally hack into Ubisoft to leak one of their game trailers, and the trailer you leak might actually be a new trailer for a new game. Whoa. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, stuff like that's kind of fun. A lot of it is, you know, very ripped from the headlines. There's some pharmaceutical guy who's trying to buy exclusive rights to a band's album, right? And, uh, there's a church that's brainwashed celebrities, and to believing in aliens, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Which, again, it almost feels maybe a little bit more Grand Theft auto -y. Again, it's getting a bit more satirical like that, if not quite as nasty as Grand Theft Auto can be sometimes. But, I mean, yeah, I think it's an improvement. I think it's better. It's not a bad game. I think it might be a good game. Um, but, you know, I don't know if it's something that you need to rush out to go play. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like one of those games that might kind of get lost in the... Uh... The shuffle this holiday people aren't really talking about it too much i think everyone's like waiting to see like i think people got burned on the first watchdogs which I i'm with you i didn't hate it it was fine uh but it's definitely something i'm gonna wait and see um yeah it seems like there's like basically anything that's coming out the rest of this year kind of has this this problem almost of gathering excitement like dishonored 2 just came out and it doesn't really seem like people are excited about it mm -hmm. and in both cases these are the temple games for these companies right for uh, ubisoft with watchdogs for a holiday mm -hmm. and uh dishonored 2 for bethesda so they kind of have a lot riding on these so it'll be interesting interesting to see how they do or if we're still at this point where people are still kind of like you know playing those three shooters that came out during uh you know last month and this month I, I'm definitely in that situation. Well, I mean, I'm playing Dishonored 2 right now. I'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll kind of get into the topics for this week. Uh, yeah, I, I was expecting uh, people to be more excited than they are, and honestly, they should be. So far, it's been a really good game. I mean, we got it, you know, pretty late because of Bethesda's review policy thing. So I'm uh, 
waiting for them to I, I'm, I'm kind of like I'm playing it and I'm like oh my god this is like a really good game and I'm like I can't wait to go tell people and it already seems like it's past the point where people are going to want to hear about it uh, I actually wrote a story it should go up after you know we're done podcasting today about how it, it came out in the UK and it, it debuted at number four on the charts behind um I think it was behind FIFA, which I guess maybe you can expect, but also behind Call of Duty and Battlefield One, and all those games came out a week or more ago, or, or a week or more uh, ago, uh, and you know th- this one came out this week, and it still couldn't get past that uh, those top three. Yeah, that's that kind of strange, and I I think I heard too that it's selling slower over there yes. than the first one did, and that's you never really want to see that. No, it's a bad no, it's sign, a bad. I think, for any sequel. I mean, Titanfall Two. But had a it's strange. Thing. It's strange because people liked Dishonored One, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's hard to pinpoint exactly why that would be. I agree. It's I have no, I kind of am lost. Uh, you know, it's tempting to be like, oh, they didn't give it like let us review it, but I don't think that's the case because that's it seems like reviews. You know, people could take them or leave them. They want to buy into the marketing hype, and it just seems like maybe yes. that they missed the mark with the marketing. We should just pretend that it is because they cut us out. <laughs> and now they're reaping what they sow. Oh, you don't want to give us a review copy. Enjoy your sales. <laughs> that's ha, what ha, happens. Ha. And it's like, well, that's, that's probably not it, but it makes me feel better. Um, Mike, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about this week. We should probably jump into the topics. Let's get into these topics. And then if, you know, we think of something else, we can get there. But let's, I want to talk about that NES, man. Yeah, so it's the NES Classic this week. It's kind of our big topic. So, uh, l- like I said, and I'll kind of run it, run it down again, we take these fundamental questions in the game industry that everyone's asking each week, and we answer them. Uh, it's not, you know, we're not going to be wishy-washy. We're going to have answers. Uh, I think we're going to jump through a few NES class- Classic-related questions, um, and then we have some other stuff. But, Mike, let's start with just, like, I think the basic first one should be, is the NES Classic a good deal? And I'm bringing this to you because you actually look in- looked into this. Yeah, I kind of had fun on Friday with a story on this because um, I've actually kind of gotten into collecting like old games a bit more because uh, there's like a store around here that sells like, you know, everything from NES Beyond, which, you know, I don't live in a big city, so that's kind of rare for me. So it's kind of been fun to get into that again. And, you know, sometimes just buying an old NES game, it could cost anywhere from 5 to $60 or, you know, $100 depending on uh, how rare it is or not. And a lot of the games in the NES Classic Edition, they aren't rare games necessarily, you know, like Super Mario Bros. They printed so many of those. But still, it's 30 games. So I kind of just did some math here uh, from a site I called, I found called uh, Price Charting, which has like the average loose item price of uh, each game. And loose item means it's just the cartridge, right? Mm-hmm. It's not in a box. It's not sealed in mid condition. It's a used item. Um, and so if you combine just the price of all the games uh what you're going to uh get is 425 dollars and 70 cents and that's just for the 30 games right and then a console it says 61 dollars i've seen them on sale for as much as 90 to get like an original nes and then a controller like an old nes controller about 15 16 dollars so together, if you were to get everything that you get, you know, in the NES Classic, it's five hundred and two dollars and forty nine cents. So you would save four four hundred forty two dollars and forty nine cents. Now, keep in mind, you know, you're obviously you're losing out on actually owning physical versions of these things, owning the originals. So it's not like a perfect comparison, but still, I think hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You know, if you really wanted to legitimately go out and get these games. Uh, I think it is a pretty good deal for sixty dollars. I think it's it's good. And again, I know somebody out there is going to be like, you could just download these things on a ROM and whatnot. Not, but not only is that you know whatever morally, but it's, it's not as much fun to it's not. play a ROM of something on your Android device or on your computer or whatever. When, I don't know when you are holding that NES controller and it's an official Nintendo product. By golly, <laughs> you know I don't know. Yeah, this is something different about that experience. Yeah, I uh, I actually set up my Steam Link, which is like a little fifty dollar thing that you plug in your TV. It lets you stream stuff uh, from your computer, and I set it up so that I can pick NES games ROMs from my computer and stream them to my TV. And even that, while it looks really cool because it has this nice menu and it brings in all the uh, game art and stuff like that, it looks great. Uh, it's still that isn't quite what I want because it feels like. Um, there's always a little bit of lag when I'm streaming it. And even if I plugged it directly into my, uh, 
it directly into the, into the TV to try to remove as much of that lag as possible. I'm still using like an Xbox One controller and nothing feels official. Like you said, there's something about it being made by Nintendo that I think would make it more fun. Um, Even like, you know, like I'll play, I play a lot of NES games on like my 3DS on the virtual console, right? And even that just isn't quite as satisfying as right. like actually using this device and in kind of what you're talking about with lag, you know, this thing just connects via HDMI. There's no lag. It looks fantastic, right? I mean, it's, it's still pixelated, but it is, you know, high definition and just runs so well. And it's, it's, it's a very sleek device for what it is, right? For something that just plays a bunch of old games, it, it kind of does have that feel of something that's new still and so when like it comes to the value like you pointed out just the raw numbers um but like i think just like the idea of 60 dollars for 30 nes games um with it comes with a controller a very short cord or whatever but even even so even with that limitation 60 dollars in my head just feels like the right number for this thing like do you get that sense oh yeah that's I think that's super reasonable. I mean, that's the price of just a modern game. Mm -hmm. It's a whole thing of hardware. I mean, honestly, I would have paid more because I'm, you know, this, this is something that speaks to me a lot. And I think you're the same as me. We're kind of the same age where when we were kids, our first system was an NES and our earliest memories are playing on this uh, console and just, I don't know, just something special about that and kind of recapturing that thing again. Even just like the little console itself, it's just so cool looking, you know? Even if like, for whatever reason, you were done with this thing at some point, like actively playing it, you just put it on a shelf and it looks nice. Yeah, and I I mean, I, and there are some games missing that I would want um, and stuff like that, but I, I think they hit all like the, the really high points with a few exceptions and and so again, I think just that that number for what you're getting is just so perfect. Um, it's a very, I think the library is overall uh, pretty excellent. You you have all of the big heavy hitters, like all the Mario's, all the Zeldas, but then you have a lot of good like representations. They do include a lot of third party games, which I like. You have Castlevania in there. You have Mega Man in there. You have something like Tech Mobile in there, right? So you you have a sports game. You have you know these kind of classic action games. You have uh, brawlers like Double Dragon Two. You have like more arcade titles like Donkey Kong or even Bubble Bobble. It, it's just a very good mix. You have a puzzle game with uh, Dr. Mario. Yeah, so for, and I get, you know, you have a number 30 and sometimes some things are going to be missing. And, and you know, the NES, there's so many good games you could put on there, which is why the idea of just doing another one of these in another year with twice as many games is pretty appealing too. But for if you're going to pick 30 games, I think it's about as good a job as you can do. And so I think the yeah, somebody is, watching right now, uh, hey, it's Josh. Hey, Josh says that he wishes Maniac Mansion were on there. And yeah, yeah I saw yes. that. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that, that'd be interesting. But so I think the clear answer here is, and I think we've come to that decision, is the NES Classic is a good deal. Um, I mean, I don't think you would argue with that, right? God, no. It's a great deal. Yeah. If so, you can buy one. Yeah, exactly. And I think that kind of brings us to our next point. Like, it is a good deal. And I think so many people agree that there were lines out the door at Target and Walmart for, to, to pick one up. It crashed Amazon's site when it finally went on sale, I think, on Friday afternoon. Um, I had trouble with both Target and Best Buy. And uh, I think one other website might have had it. And I, I had trouble with all of them trying to buy one. I eventually did. Get, I was able to buy one from Best Buy and it won't get here till, t till tomorrow. Um, but that kind of, you know, that brings us to our next question. Is Nintendo fabricating the, the supply shortage to specifically get people talking about how much people want these things? So I'm glad I reviewed this thing. So I just got one sent to me. <laughs> you get you you you've been reviewing all these fancy consoles, right? You got an Xbox One S and the PlayStation Four Pro. I was like, fine, you can have all that crap. I'm getting the NES Classic <laughs> Edition. I don't care. Um, yeah, sure they are a bit, right? I mean, that's not super surprising. Usually, I think it is also. Nintendo always does this, and I think that's that is part of it. Trying to you know create that demand and like the headlines, like oh it's sold out. But they've also I think are kind of being a little cautious about it, right? They don't want to, and end up with whatever reason not having this be a hit, and then just having these, every, you know, all the places where they can't sell them. But it's even still, you had to figure that they kind of knew they had something here, and maybe they could have made more. But yeah, I, I think so. Because I mean, why not? Just re release a few, get them out there, see how popular it is. Everybody's buzzing about it now. When there are more, they will buy it, and you kind of have now established a brand. Yeah, I think um, I, I think I think they probably are doing it on purpose. But 
I also think that they're just like, you know, let's sell what we could sell in this first week. If it gets buzzed because it's sold out, great. If it doesn't sell out and we we have just enough, then also great because then we don't have a ton sitting on store shelves and retailers aren't sending them back and we don't have a bunch sitting in a, in a warehouse and stuff like that. So I think it's a, it's a combination of just like, like you know typical smart business decisions and also on the other end if this does end up happening and creating lines that you know that's always going to create good buzz they saw this a million times like you mentioned this is the, something they always do they did it with the wii maybe i mean the wii was sold out for like a couple of years and i don't think they were like <laughs> limiting supply for years sure but i mean it didn't I think, have that problem with the wii u no that, that's a good point and i think they wish they did uh and i think that's why like they're um same with the switch. Oh, we'll have, we're going to make 2 million, um, before March, which is like even fewer consoles than the, the Wii U sold in it in like a similar time span. So I think they're just in general, they're just trying to get to a point where they don't have any like slack in their supply line. But at the same time, they know that this is going to benefit them when people you know, see new stories that it's impossible to find. The timing of this thing sure is good, isn't it? Right. When they kind of are between consoles, right. They don't really have anything to sell people this holiday besides Pokemon for uh, 3DS, and now all of a sudden you got this mini NES thing that is, you know, kind of a hot item right now. I mean, do you, I mean, here's like a bonus like Games Beat Decides question. What do you think is the bigger console launch? I mean, PlayStation 4 Pro or NES Classic? And if you're asking me which one I would rather have, it would be an NES Classic. Look, but there's nothing to except for the cord on that controller, which I could even grab and show you. Have you seen how short it is? Because you hear the cord is short. Do you have a? Unless you, have you a, see it. Do you have an original mm -hmm. one and and that new? Yes. Oh, I'll be right back. Fill yeah, some air time. Yeah, yeah. Do that. I'll fill it up. So, okay. So while Mike is doing that, I guess I'll kind of like give you guys a little primer on this cord. So the original NES cord was like nine feet long in that range. The new one that's on the NES Classic, it comes with the NES Classic, is like three feet long, and three feet long. I, I mean. Maybe it's hard to imagine, but like uh, think of like the cord that connects the Wii controller to the nunchuck, and it, it's like that long. It's it's um, it, it, like if you ho held it like the NES Classic and the system and the controller like right here, the cord would just be like this. It wouldn't like hit the ground or anything. It is absurd how like how okay yeah he's back, but it's absurd how close like you'd have to sit to the TV to get this to work. Sir, so, do you have it? Okay, so which one is this? This is the new one. Oh my god! Yeah, that's that's. Crazy. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll, I'll do a scrolling. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do a little dance. dance. This is it. Oh my god! Oh my it god. like it really is like the length of like a nunchuck, like a nunchuck cord. cord. Yeah, it's about from the camera to me right here. Oh so like, the, let's like get the, the original arm almost. Here's the original now. Uh. Still going. Still going. Still going. Oh, we got some tangled knots here, but yeah, <laughs> it's about uh, it's just so much longer. And I'll back up a bit, but man, it's just ridiculous. I know it's not like a great sense, obviously, but God, I don't. It's such a glaring mistake. It's like right, like it's just so weird. What were they thinking with why, that? Uh, yeah, why? Why yeah. would they, like? Can you think of any reason why? The only thing I could almost come up with is that. It's the same, like, so the end thing is the same thing as, like, uh, the classic controller, or, like, what you would, like, the nunchuck, what you would put at the end of a Wiimote, right? Mm -hmm. And you could put this the, this new controller on the end of a Wiimote, and it's about the same size as, like, that, although even that's a little longer, so maybe it was just some, I don't even know how that would make sense, but something to do with that, I have no idea. There's no reason for the cord to be this short. So the, Penny's upset, too. Yeah, the dog hates it. So they probably just had a bunch of those like cords already manufactured to connect to like Wii and Wii U peripherals, and they're like, oh, let's just hook that up to. to it, this I think it's yeah. I mean, you know, it had to be something like that. It had to be like they had all these cords and or something, and, but it's just so comically short. And like at least it's like a problem where the solution is literally just have to make a new controller, and I bet they will. So everybody mm -hmm. buys that also for ten dollars or whatever. But. I don't know. Uh, what do they call that? The NES Classic Ooh, Deluxe Cord Edition. The NES Classic. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> here, here we go. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, I, but I don't think you're wrong. I think like part of this is, you know, well, one of the reasons I think they did do this is because like in order to get back to the menu, you have to hit the reset button, button on the controller itself, right? Or on the uh, system itself. Uh, that's another thing. It's like, you know, 
I, I kind of like that fine because I don't know if I no, want a home button on the controller, right? You don't want to mess with. No, I agree with that. Uh, but I'm just like, I, so I think they're like, they want you to sit close to the system so that when you want to jump back, like you just have to reach for it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like Josh, yeah, Josh is saying that too. He, he's glad the controller short because he was a kid and sat close to the TV to play. I was close to the TV, but you, you still don't understand just how short this is. Even if you're sitting like pretty close to the TV, it's, it's just, I don't know. There's no reason for it to be significantly shorter than the original cord. Right. Yep, that, that is very weird. So, all right, kind of getting back to the question, uh, is Nintendo fabricating the supply sh shortage? I I'll say yes, because I think I think sure. you made a pretty good argument. I, I was kind of leaning maybe maybe they weren't, and this is just like their new business model, but I think you're still right that they want to kind of get those buzz. That a little bit of both, on. but, yeah. you know, I don't, think, I don't think it's an evil thing that they did. No, I mean, no, yeah. this doesn't go on forever, but, yeah, I think that's what's happened. Yeah, I mean, people are still really mad. Like, a lot of people really want one and, like, go to line up and don't get one. I think people are feeling pretty hurt about that or, you know, burnt or whatever. But, oh, sure. But th but there's going be be, to be more. Be more. Before yeah. Thanksgiving, there's going to be plenty more uh, out there. But, but yeah, okay. So I think this will be our, our last NES Classic topic, and then we have um, – we're going to move on to something that's kind of in the game of the year realm, but we aren't going to be talking about that quite yet until later this year. But so the last one for NES Classic – is there going to be an NES Classic 2? Is there going to be a Super NES Classic? Or do you think that Nintendo takes this and maybe shifts into the Switch to offer, like, NES Classic, like, a subscription service? Um, so that, the thing you're saying later there is kind of what I always thought they should do and maybe would do. But I don't know. Now I think that this kind of device might be the future of that. I think... You know, your first question will be an NES Classic 2 or a SNES Classic. I think yes on both accounts. I think that we'll see more iterations of this device till eventually we get to a point where you have something that just has, like, every game released for the NES. Or, you know, as about as close to it as they can get reasonably. Right, and maybe that's a longer ways off. But, I mean, if you would have told me 10 years ago a device like this we'd even get from Nintendo, I'd probably have said no. So, I think that's coming. And I think... SNES Classic, that's got to be just the most obvious thing to do yeah. for next year. Maybe not even next year, but come on. And that'll be even better. Oh my god, just having like having that little SNES and just having immediate access mm -hmm. to Super Metroid, Mario World, Mario Kart, Link to the Past, you can get Mega Man X on there, Super Castlevania 4, you get some of those RPGs, get Chrono Trigger on there, Final Fantasy 3, Super Mario RPG, I mean, there's just so many, 30 SNES games, oh my gosh, that would yeah, be great. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, you could have 30 SNES games without any duds, like, at all. Like, every single one of them could be, like, in a running for, like, a top 10 list of all time, because there's just so many That's good great. Super Nintendo games. So, right. I mean, you could, yeah, you could, again, you could do that one with only just Nintendo games, but again, it's so cool that right. they haven't put any third party stuff in. So, yeah, so I think, mean, I think my idea is next Christmas we'll probably get an NES Classic 2, and unless they want to speed this up and do one of those in the summer and then have SNES Classic ready to go for next, next winter. Um, because that, that seems like it might make a lot of sense for them to have, like, the SNES. Like, for people who are like, oh, well, I already got the NES Classic 1, I don't need these other NES games. So, next holiday they have, like, the big thing, which would be SNES Classic. But I, I do think that your first point is right, that maybe they were considering something like a, a software solution to go along with the Switch, but I think this is going to be so lucrative for them and get them so much more buzz and attention that they're going to be like, this is the solution for now for a while. So it, it makes me feel like the chances of them really doing something right with Virtual Console on their next system is starting to look pretty slim. It's kind of the negative thing about this is that I do think it is probably going to hurt the Virtual Console uh, business a good deal even though they you know they can make a lot of money from that maybe even more in a way because mm -hmm. i mean i don't know how much an nes classic you know costs to make but again they're selling them for 60 dollars uh, who knows exactly how much money they're making whereas when you're selling a digital copy of an old game for ten dollars like super mario world that's almost just all profit when you're doing that yeah and it but seems like they could get... do that as a subscription ten dollars a month lock people in to like you know play all these games as much as you want and you only lose access once you stop paying the subscription it seems like i mean in air ea is doing that with a lot of their games and so obviously that's a business model that must work uh if ea is like willing to put like i still think nintendo's still weirded out by the idea of like how to deliver those games is it temporary downloads is it streaming i can't imagine they would do streaming no. and a lot of these games just really wouldn't work with streaming no. i think because if you have any lag at all it's just Kind of disaster. So, you know, I, I think 
again, that's another thing where maybe, I think at some point we'll have something like that, but maybe a little further off than I would like. And meanwhile, you know, you have this thing, and this works pretty well, and people seem to like it, so here it comes. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I just think that we are at a point where Nintendo's looking for any way to get as much attention while also making the most amount of money as possible, and that's that's going to be something along the lines of NES Classic for a while. Do you think there's going to be a Game Boy Classic? That's what I'm wondering. I think they're going to ride this thing hard. I think we're going to go all the way up to, like, you know, maybe not right away, but at some point there will be a GameCube Classic. Yeah. Which, oh my gosh. I mean, God, I mean, what, 15 years from now, so um, we Classic, right? Just Right, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, we used to, I, I always would say, like, oh, it's like, how are we going to play, like, Mario Galaxy again someday? Because you can't just make a digital version of that for a new console. Just sell some weird Wii thing for $60 that comes with a Wii mode and nunchuck and 30 Wii games. I mean, gosh, that one might even be hard to find 30 of them. Then I mean, you get, you make that, you'll never even need the original Wii. Yeah, um. You I, can I, call it a Wii Wii. <laughs> It'll be a wee wee. It'll be a wee little. Wee oh little goddamn it, Mike! Um, I, I think you're right. That in like 15 years, when like all those kids that grew up on the Wii are in college or whatever, and they're not like playing games every day, but like they want something to do in their dorm rooms, they're yeah. Nintendo's gonna have like a wee wee ready to go. Oh my god. Um. So yeah. So yeah. Now here's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing: Is Sony going to make the PlayStation Classic Edition now? Because they're the only one who's still making consoles that has something retro to go back to, right? Like, the X nobody really wants to, like, an Xbox Classic Edition, right? No one really cares. Not really, no. But, I mean, a PlayStation 1 kind of device, I think there'd be market for that. And, uh, yeah, I think Sony has, like, all their PlayStation Classic games up for sale on their, on their store. But so did Nintendo. Right. But I think you're right. I think if Sony sees this, they might try something like that. I mean, obviously... Uh, the storage for a 500 megabyte CD um, compared to like, you know, we're talking about kilobytes for uh, an NES game. Sure. Like that's going to mess with the uh, the economics of this a little bit, but I think they will try to figure it out and, and pretty quickly. Um, even if they put like 15 games, I think they could almost get away with that. Uh, if they're like big old PlayStation, PlayStation games that are like, you know, 25 hours well, sure, get, put a couple some, get the crashes on there, some Spyros, get, right. get a deal for Final Fantasy 7, get get ape escape oh man prop of the rap rap ah, just, it's just fun to like think about each console and be like what are the 30 games that you would put on the classic edition and, that and, like you know represent that console and i think the nes classic has proven that like just having that hdmi port is so important having a way to plug it's it so in. hard with these systems and, yeah and i you know i've been saying like i haven't you know playing a lot of my old machines again i plug them all in and i love doing that it's super fun and no matter how many of these things i get i'll still do that um, but I mean, it is, you know, I have to get an old CRTV and plug it into like some corner in my living room and, you know, in a way it kind of lends to the retroness, but it's also kind of ugly mm -hmm. and you have like, and you have, you know, all these things hooked up and I don't, you know, and there's, it's there's definitely like, a convenience to this. And it's hard to like gather like the family around like your old gaming setup around an old CRTV when you are CRT TV, when you already have like the big flat screen downstairs in the family room and like having the option to just put like on. Christmas Day, a lot of people are going to get these, plug it right in their TV, and it's going to look fine. Like, they're not going to have right. to be like, it's why does go, it look so yeah. squished and weird? This looks a lot worse. I mean, some people are going to be like that for some other reasons, but it's not going to be because there's some mix-up in between the signal. Thing with just, like, my Super Nintendo especially, I mean, you, you, can, you don't just put a game in and get it going. You put it in, you jiggle it around, you clean the cartridge, you, you clean the connector teeth oh, on man. the console itself. I mean, these things are getting old, and, you know, at some point, they're not going to work anymore. So it's kind of good to think about, and I like the idea that there will be a solution for how you play these things again that isn't just, you know, get your Android device and put it on there. It, it has a bit more soul than that, and it, it resembles... It pretty much resembles what we were originally doing, right? If I'm playing a uh, Mega Man 2 on an NES Classic Edition, sure, you know, it looks nicer and the console's smaller, but it feels like I'm playing Mega Man 2 on an NES. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, I think that kind of does. I think we also decided that one. There's definitely going to be more of these, without a doubt. There's not just going to be more of these. There's going to be the PlayStation Classic, like you said. They're just going to... I think these things are going to start rolling out in a way that, like... Like, we've always had them, like, with the old crappy, like, Genesis ones. That's the one that, like, pops to my mind immediately. But we've had right, yeah, those have been, been a thing forever, forever, but, like, no one cared. And, like, they didn't have, I don't think many of them had, like, HDMI ports, did they? High-quality products. 
Yeah, they just they kind of came out and they were like, okay, like this is something you definitely buy at a gas station, like because you see it there and you're like, you just got your paycheck and you're like, oh, I have stupid money to spend. I'm gonna spend it on stupid stuff. Um, and like, the results were never as good as I think what the NES Classic is delivering. And I'm excited to get mine. Um, okay, I think we should probably move on to our. I, this will probably be our last topic. We're kind of getting to be okay. about 30, 40 minutes in. Um, Mike, I'm. I'm I'm looking at the calendar, and you said it earlier. Like we're at a point where all these games, any games coming out now, are kind of fighting for attention because we're kind of past everything that's big, everything that was uh, important and, draw- and getting people's attention. It's the end of the year, and in a few weeks, we're going to be doing a Games Beat Decide podcast about what were the best, so, you know, the top ten games of the year, and which one was the best out of those. But at this point, are you afraid that you're looking at some of your favorite games and? no one's talking about them for the, for the year and that you're afraid something's going to get lost? You know, I'm not really afraid. There's two big games in the running in my head right now. I don't know if I want to you know, say what they are because we don't want to ruin We, we all know, but yeah, you don't have to say them. But we you, know, know. you know what they are. <laughs> but they're both games that have gotten plenty of attention, right? right? And some, like last year was a year where my game of the year was Ori and the Blind Forest, right? Which was not like a super obvious choice. Or a super mainstream one, not that it was, you know, super indie darling, it was obviously published by Microsoft, but still, it was a game that I thought I had to kind of fight a little bit for to give it some attention. This year, it's it's not, it's a more mainstream thing that I actually do think is the best game. And, you know, maybe there's some games that, like, I think should be, you know, third or fourth that I, I might have to, you know, make a point for. Um, like, you know, like, I liked the new Ace Attorney a lot, right? So, and, and, you know, that again, that's like something you almost don't expect to get a whole lot of love. Doom is kind of there, but Doom still even got yeah, a Doom's pretty good amount. Yeah, Doom's fine. Um, and then, bes- I mean, besides that, I don't know. You know, is it going to be a hard push to give Titanfall maybe the love it deserves? And maybe that's what you're thinking. Yeah, it, uh, I'm actually not, because I think Titanfall is going to be fine. I mean, I think we're going to have to have some arguments, because I've, you know, Jason's dragging his feet on Titanfall, and we'll get to that at Game of the Year time. He's going to get scolded for that. But I'm thinking, like, um, Hitman and some VR games, like Thumper and Res Infinite, that either people haven't been playing enough, or, like, in Hitman's case, this game's spread out in such, like, weird chunks that it's not exactly the kind of game that people have experienced before, so they're not, not quite sure how to process it in, like, that Game of the Year conversation. Do you, I mean, you get it? I mean a little bit. Walking Dead uh, in that first season didn't have any trouble getting uh, Game That's of the true. Year love. I remember, but even though it was kind of the only one that did, uh, but Hitman has kind of some weird things going uh, against it. I know ne- I didn't play any of them. I've just never played this series, even though I hear good things about this. The fact that I haven't played it, and the fact that it's episodic, it's weird because you would think that would be less of a barrier of entry, but in some weird way, I feel like it's like this extra commitment. Like, oh, I'm gonna play episode one and then i don't know what, what happens after that maybe i'll have to play four more of these and if i i, I don't know why that weirds me out in some weird way but and, and, but this and this is exactly my thing like i think that it, it, it is a barrier for a lot of people and like hitman is the game that i would point to and be like actually no you have to get over that because it, i haven't played a lot of hitmans before either but hitman is like it's special this time around they have done they have like found the formula that the formula that works and the episodic, it actually lends itself to this completely because uh, as you kind of are getting these episodes, it gives you time to appreciate the world that they built for each one of these missions and you replay them and you try to figure out different ways of doing them. Uh, instead of like going from one mission and be like, okay, I, I killed that guy, I can go to the next one. You don't think of it like that anymore. You not you start thinking about it in terms of like, no, this I'm going to spend more time with just this one area that they spent a lot more time focusing on than maybe they would have otherwise. Um, and there's something to that that I think is worth everyone kind of exploring because it's, I think it should be up there. I, it's I don't it, personally I don't think it's going to win anything in, like in terms of like the top you know one or two or three, but it's going to be in the conversation in that top ten, and that, that's why I think it's like important to like kind of talk about it now. Yeah, I guess I kind of get you on the VR front. That's kind of interesting because right. it's just it's so hard to like. I think some outlets are going to have the VR game of the year, right? Or it'll just be about that, and they'll have the like one or two people on staff who've been able to like actually get these devices <laughs> talk about that. But yeah, it's just it's at a very weird spot right now to be like, hey, everybody, don't you think this VR game was maybe the best game this year? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna like 
convince any of you guys about like things like like Resident Evil. Well, it's like, like you like, can't convince me because I haven't played it. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, and like there's going to be games that like we haven't played that are, are traditional. But I think even those, you'll have a better time of like arguing into the top sure. ten for the games for our games beat official top ten. For argument for Hitman just now, right? Right. Exactly. But and I think I, to... and I think you'll kind of you'll get that. But I think VR is still just there's so much of this like experiential like wall between what you are imagining and like in you know and what I've experienced, uh, and so I think that's going to be a tough one. And I do think games like Thumper and Res Infinite are going to have a harder time. Uh, spe- specifically because they are primarily like kind of a confession. Go for it. I, n- I never thought Res was that good. Me neither. Me neither. No, that's the thing. That's my point. I've never. I, I never played Res. VR Res a little bit at GDC. I think it's it's better, but like Area Five and then Area X kind of really sell the whole thing. Yeah, I didn't play that. I just played like the original game in VR. Yeah, it kind of like shows you. I mean, I I don't think I. I'm not as crazy about it as some other people. Some people are like, this is like a religious experience for me playing Res. And I'm not like them, but I do think it's like, it's a worthy being in that conversation again. But I don't know. I, I think uh, some VR games should still end up on our list um, when we really get, when, we, when we're all said and done. Maybe, we'll see. Like you said, there's only like me and Dean who've really put any time with it. And I think Dean's not even put in here as much time as I have, so... So we'll see, but I I think Hitman. If like, if anything, I think Hitman would be the game. I'd be like, no, you guys all have to play Hitman before the end of the year. Yeah, I don't really have a Hitman this year. I don't I don't think yeah. at least like not that comes to mind. I always have to like at the end of the year look back and see. But it's not a great sign that you don't immediately remember. But yeah, I don't have something that I was like, oh, this is a big surprise, and maybe not everybody's playing this as much as they should, and like that game you champion. I don't really have that this year. Or Ori definitely or, would have been yours last year, so I could see like. Fine, uh, yeah, and like I was. You know, I, I've been like that. I was big like that on Ori last year. I still think that was easily my game of the yeah, year last it, year. I played it because you mentioned that, and I was really happy I did because I ended up, ended up being in my top ten because I think you were, like, talking about it so much. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Ori. Yeah, so uh, I think we're, we're kind of coming to the end. Um, one really quick one I think we should do, Mike. Uh, they just – it looks like it leaked, and it looks like this is true. Uh, Ooh, Telltale's next, Telltale's next, next uh, universe is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, but if you had like, if you had to have them pick one, like that, you don't think they would ever do that you would like them to do. I mean, I know maybe you're not big on, on on telltale uh, games, but, uh, you know, just in general, like if you had one, like a a fantasy one. I'm actually not that big on these telltale style games, but I always thought I would like to see them do Star Trek, like something like set in the next generation series. Cause like, you know, they've always struggled with Star Trek games. And it seems like what would be a good Star Trek game? Oh, it would be something that was just a lot of dialogue options, right? <laughs> That's kind of what Star Trek is. It's you know just a script and it's people talking uh, most of the time. You can have like you know a little action set piece here or there, and you can you know have your hotkeys for it or, or whatever. But yeah, I always thought that Star Trek would actually be a pretty good fit for it, and specifically Next Generation, just because everything these days is from the original series. I'm getting a little tired of that. But, yeah, that's always been the one I really would like to see them do. And uh, you, you have any of these game companies, they have Star Trek fans. You have to figure they've tried probably at some point. And, and yeah. who knows? I, I would be shocked if it never happened. I, I think someday that's coming. Yeah, if not then, then maybe someone else, like, just along the same style. But for me, it would be our, our Junkrat and Roadhog fanfic, you know, our slash fic for them. Finally. I actually would like to see them do, like, <laughs> like Overwatch for Overwatch, Overwatch, what they did for Borderlands, right? Yes, that would be very cool. And that's kind of one of the criticisms of Overwatch is that they have, like, this cool universe and these cool characters and, like, this background story, but none of that is in the actual game. Mm-hmm. And, and, Except for, like, pithy one-liners. And I don't even necessarily need it to be in the game, but, like, having, like, this offshoot off-shoot where, like, I could play it, like, maybe on my tablet when I'm not playing regular Overwatch, that would be cool. Okay, that's an interesting idea. Yep. So my Guardians of the Galaxy is so obvious when you hear it for yeah, Telltale. Totally. Oh, yeah. And it was, like, when that, like, first rumor came out and, and it was, like, right around the time when Guardians of the Galaxy came out and was huge. So it all kind of lined up. But I'm excited. I'm, I want to play that. It's so um, weird. Remember, like, back when Telltale was, like, it... Because right before they made it real big, their, like, last game was Jurassic Park or something, and everyone hated it. It was really bad, yeah. Yeah, I I, I'm, I know you're kind of... You've always been skeptical of Telltale or, you know... It's like, not that I'm skeptical or, like, whatever. It's just their games just aren't that for me. I, yeah. I, I like adventure games a lot, but no, to me, the different. big part... 
Yeah, the thing that I liked about them was like inventory puzzles and stuff like that, and that is not what you're doing in these no, games. Not at all. Those are they're like relationship simulators almost, and it's like a lot of the games in your head. But whatever, this could be a talk for another time. Like I think we're gonna have to wrap it up. Uh, I think it was a pretty good day of making decisions, though. We figured out we think we figured out the NES Classic. I think backwards. We like it a lot. I want more of them. Yes, I think that was a pretty good cho- choice uh, for us. Um, and then I, I tell I'm telling everyone to play Hitman. I feel pretty good about that. Um, I know you didn't. You don't really have one of your own, but I think Hitman needs to not be really. Again, like, there's games I liked, but like you know, I'm not gonna say, hey, you need to play Ace Attorney Six. If you think you should play Ace Attorney Six, you probably <laughs> did. And you probably already know. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and then yeah, um, Overwatch and what'd you say? What was oh Star Trek? That's right for uh, Star Trek. Trek. Oh yeah. All right, Mike. So this was the Games Beat Decides podcast. Um, I think going forward, it's going to be a lot more like this, where it's me and Mike kind of talking about different uh, different topics. But if you have any like if you corrections for things that you think that we got wrong, which we didn't, but if you think so, you let us know at the at Games Plus Podcast at VentureBeat dot com. Pretty sure that's the the email Games Plus the plus sign Podcast at VentureBeat dot com. And you know, also any feedback on the episode. So if you uh, have any suggestions, don't, nobody. I got some feedback. They said they don't like that Jeff Grove person. They said he's ugly and bad. Well, I can fix this. Let me just uh, delete your face. Yes, delete okay. this. No. All right. So, and that, I think that's going to wrap it up. So, everyone, thank you for listening. Um, if you're on, if you're listening to the audio version, I just deleted Mike. Um, delete, delete, delete. You're he dead. Dilap- you're dil- <laughs> dilapidated, <laughs> boat, Mike. Um, all right, guys. This is uh... <laughs> got it. We did the thing. Yeah, we did it. It's in there. It only took three episodes. Uh, Jeff Grubb signing off. Mike, say goodbye to the fine folk. Deleted. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>